Hey everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. I'm Greg, and inside this massive box is the Monport 40 watt CO2 laser machine that is light burn compatible. I'm really excited about that. You know, it's been quite a while since I've been this excited about a new piece of equipment coming to the shop. This is the first CO2 laser to arrive at the shop and I'm just really excited to create content for you viewers. Again, a big shout out to Bonport for sending me this unit to share what I learn and see with you viewers at home. I'm really excited about this machine. I've been looking at this K40 CO2 laser frame size for quite a while, but there was two things that were always holding me back. Number one is it was not light burn compatible. And number two is I was always concerned about the laser tube during shipping. But after talking to Monport, they alerted me to this machine does come with a light burn compatible controller board. And when we talked about shipping, they did state that they packaged their machines very well and I shouldn't have any worries. I'd like to start out with just doing a general look at this box. The shipping weight of this box is just over 63 pounds. So this might require two people to move and initially set up. I'll give the box a quick spin for you. On this end, I did want to note that there is some like little wrinkling on the cardboard. It'll be interesting to see if there's any shipping damage on here, but I can just tell by moving this around on the table that it feels that it is very well packaged. This just arrived yesterday and I brought it into the shop, allowed it to warm up. And in fact, I started cutting open one side of the box, but I resisted the urge to open this up and check it out right away because I wanted to share my experience with you as I initially opened this up. So the rest of the box is still factory sealed. And just as I thought, when I open up this large outer shipping box, I'm greeted by another box on the inside. And this is that nice, heavy, dual wall corrugated cardboard for the box. Here, I'll fold this front flap down and kind of lean over a little bit. The first piece of packaging material I'm greeted by is this super thick piece of foam. This foam is uh, nearly two inches thick. With that removed, we can see that here is the machine. I've got a tool parts bag and a wrench and a USB cable. I'm going to take these out and set these off to the side. I don't know if you can see it, but up in this corner, I have some of that wrinkling in the box, but this thing is fully protected with all of this thick foam all the way around. Monport was correct in saying I shouldn't have any worries about this going through shipping. I think the best way for me to lift the machine out of the box is to place these boxes on the floor and just lift just the machine out onto my work table. The machine's out of the box on the table. I'm excited to dig into it. The other components that we saw that were on the very top of the box are these green tinted safety glasses, an accessory wrench, and this is not a stamp sheet metal wrench. This is a legit, uh, nice chromed round edge wrench for adjusting the machine. There's also a nice quality USB cable along with the main power cable, hose clamps, and some silicone for setting up different parts of the machine. And I'm really digging this nice like blue purple on the accents of all the covers that can move or pivot and this nice industrial gray color on the rest of the framework of the machine. Here, let's take a closer look at all the different sides of the machine. The main thing I'm immediately drawn to on this machine is the clean layout of the control panel. 
The very bottom is the on off power switch followed by the amp meter for the power going out to the laser tube and then two more displays along with a panic e-stop button. When I move along to the side of the machine, there is the USB port for communications up to the computer. And there's some nice venting on the side of the machine and this port on the side is for access or extending out a longer laser tube. So it's really neat that this machine does have this port for the option to upgrade the length of the power tube, which essentially gives you more power. Moving on to the back side is the main 110 volt input. If you have issues with grounding in your shop or your home, there is a ground lug here to go to an actual earth ground. And that's going to be very important because inside of this long section here is the high voltage laser tube. And it's vitally important that this machine just like any other CO2 laser machine is properly grounded. There's two accessory outlets for water pump and the smoke exhaust outlet on the machine and the water inlet and outlet ports. Moving to the other side, just a blank side of the machine and coming back to the front of the machine to the business end to the work bed area when I open that up, we see that there is more packaging foam. And that's something that I really like with the companies that package their products very well. I worked in manufacturing for about 20, 30 years. And the biggest thing that I hated to see was all the hard work manufacturing a product and then it gets damaged in shipping. But it's very nice to see that this is very well protected. I've got one more box. I'll check this out in just a second. And here's the hose for the exhaust that we just saw on the back of the machine. I can see on the back, there's an LED light strip. So it'll be neat to see when I actually have power on this machine. The front control panel, there is a screw that keeps this closed. Along when I move to the back side, the laser tube has the same thing. There's a little screw here that must be removed in order to access this back panel. Now I'll check out what's inside of this box that was located inside of this cover. The top of the box is labeled 110 V. Okay. This is going to be the accessory water pump. This machine, like virtually all other CO2 laser machines on the market that are kind of in this class. This is a water cooled CO2 laser machine. My initial reaction when I open this control cabinet is that, wow, everything is laid out very nicely. I've got spiral wrap keeping all the wires together. I'm really happy to see that all of the electrical connections where they can, they put a dab of hot melt glue to make sure that nothing shakes loose during shipping or during normal operation. When we take a look at the displays that are on the, the cabinet itself, they also have that same hot melt glue. All the wiring is neat and clean. And here's a quick little shot of the controller board. And again, this is the thing that's really got me excited about this machine is the compatibility with the light burn software. And the main job of this main like blue box here is the high voltage power supply going out to the CO2 laser tube that's located just back there. Let's go take a look at that. I've got the laser machine flipped around on my workbench just so that I've got better lighting. All the lighting in the shop and the studio here is coming from this direction. And I really want to check out what this laser tube looks like. Starting on the side that's closest to the control panel, we'll see that we have the positive voltage, high voltage wire coming out to a ceramic connector. And that runs directly into the laser tube. And then we'll see this is the water jacket for the laser tube. And then here's the negative that goes back to the power supply. And here's our first mirror. 
And again, these mirrors have a little dab of hot melt glue to lock them in place so they don't shake loose during shipping. I'll have two more pieces of packaging foam to remove before I put this into operation. The clamps for the laser tube do have a, a thick piece of silicone on the bottom and a thinner piece up on the top. And that's going to be true for both of the clamps. So that cuts down on any vibration from the machine running, vibrating the laser tube during operation. Another really neat feature that I like about this cabinet is this back cover can be totally removed with just a little movement of this hinge pin. While I had my screwdriver out from accessing the main control panel and the laser tube cabinet, I went inside the work bed area and removed these four screws on this access panel. I can then remove this access panel and that reveals this built-in clamp. This is a really neat clamping system built into the machine that acts kind of like a honeycomb without any bottom on it. It allows the laser to cut cleanly through the material without anything directly underneath it to cause any smoke or burn marks to reflect back onto the project material. My first overall impression with this machine is wow from how well it was packaged in the box, shipped here, completely wrapped in that nice thick white foam. There's not a dent or a scratch on this machine. The nice thick metal that makes up the frame of this machine exudes confidence and quality that this piece of equipment is going to last for years and years. You know, it's been a while since I've been this excited about a new piece of equipment arriving at the shop. This is the first CO2 laser that's arrived at the shop. Again, special thanks to Monport for sending this to me. I love creating content like this for viewers like you. I love sharing all the different features on the machine how to set things up, what's all included with everything on it, and they're just fun videos to make. If you like this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps connect content like this with viewers like you. The next video is coming up. I'll be setting up the water pump that connects up to the machine, connecting the computer, to the machine using the light burn software and then doing the initial checks of the mirror alignment on the machine. The video coming up after that will be the first project. So there'll be a whole playlist of videos just on this machine from the unboxing to getting it set up to things covering on the basic maintenance on here that you need to do uh, weekly, as well as maintenance that you'll need to do on this monthly. So a lot of neat stuff coming up. That's why it's important to subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. Until next time, learn, create, and share.